Here's the Soundman Great Deck Type Breakdown. This is not my exact deck list. You'll be seeing that in a bit. Here's the top extra deck and all that good stuff. I was talking to Twitch chat about what I call the point system when making combos. One of the best combos with Soundman Great is to have a wolf plus the counter trap plus a heat soul. You're drawing every turn. You got Omni Negate recycling. It's insane. Now, what's the point system? The points represent how many summons I could perform in one turn. If I could perform two summons, that's two points. And if it's with Gazelle, I can make Wolf plus Counter Trap. If I could perform four summons, that's going to be Wolf, Counter Trap, and the Heat Soul. If you look at my hand, how many summons can I perform? I could perform a normal summon. I could perform the Gazelle could send a monster from the deck to the graveyard, which is another summon, but then I lose the Counter Trap. So... With Gazelle, if Gazelle is just an additional special summon, Jack Jaguar, additional special summon, the Fox, additional special summon, plus my normal summon. This is a four-point hand with Gazelle being able to send the counter trap. If it sent a monster, it would be a five-point hand, but we're not making a five-point combo. We're doing a four-point combo, four summons. Let's go. So let's execute summon number one. So we have three more points to execute to perform the combo. We got the Bale Lynx triggering the Gazelle off of the monster being sent from the field to the graveyard. Anywhere the, the Salman Grid's being sent to the graveyard is going to activate. Gazelle sending the counter trap. Very good. That's going to be for the Omni Negate. We got Sunlight Wolf with the field spell to summon a wolf over the wolf. The field spell with the Foxy. Very good. Most of your Salman Grid cards are dependent on a Salman Grid being on the field. Foxy is independent. If there's a face-up card anywhere on the field that's a spell or trap, Foxy could be summoned by discarding a Salman Grate, not requiring a Salman Grate on the field. Jack Jaguar requires a Salman Grate Link. The Spinny requires a Salman Grate Monster. We're going to link this off into the Wolf. Wolf is now going to be adding the Counter Trap for the Graveyard back to the hand. We now got our Omni Negate. Now we need to perform our fourth and final summon. Just like that, with two cards, you can make the Heat Soul. Want to add back the gazelle by summoning the monster to where the wolf is pointing to. Splash mage into the heat soul. Heat soul requires cybers monsters, and they must be different attributes. Every single one of them. If you use three monsters, that's three different attributes to summon this. Very difficult because this whole deck is fire. So by summoning this with the splash mage, it's perfect. Two card, two different attributes. Let's go. Draw a card every single turn, drawing into the call by the grave. Damn. We got Roar. You do want to draw during their draw phase. Double effect Veiler. It's not hard once per turn. So this, the Heat Soul gave us Called by the Grave, gave us another Veiler, and we're drawing every single turn. There's no way you're going to be able to play through this. The Hand Traps, the draws are endless. We got the Counter Trap with it. He's going to try to fuse with our field. I'm going to Veil. He's going to Chain Call by the Grave. I'm going to Veil again. I don't think so, man. He's going to Call by the Grave. I'm going to Chain Link 6. Negate. I don't think so, mate. And it's all thanks to the Heat Soul. Heat Soul gave us the other Veiler. Heat Soul gave us the Call by the Grave. The Heat Soul advantage is insane. This is what you want to do turn one. If not Heat Soul, you could try to make a Baguska, which is harder to do to get the two level fours in the field instead. Woohoo! Our turn, draw again. Their turn, draw again. So if you're playing against a control matchup, let's say an Eldritch deck, you're drawing every turn if they don't deal with the Heat Soul. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Yeah, I'm not going to Ash Blossom that. That's a debate. I'm going to Ash this. I think it's a good Ash. It's a good Ash. I think so, but it's not going to stop him. Let's go, full power. We good. He has the quick effect to pop a card, draw a card. It's got back row, probably hand traps. Let's do it. Now, if you remember the first duel, I talked about a point system, uh, the points representing how many summons. If you are going turn two with Sal Mangrate, three points equals Axis Code Talker, 5,000 damage twice, wipe the field and deal 10,000 damage. We could do three summons. We have normal summon, special summon, and summon, and we have some extension to play through hand traps. I'm gonna grab Gazelle. Side net mining. Discard the Foxy. We still got the three summons. We have normal spinny, special spinny, and special Gazelle. 
that's still 10,000 damage lethal. We're good, we're fine. I'm baiting the back row, baiting the hand traps. Even better, we got buffer low to maybe grab more advantage. He's gonna be drawing off of that, that's gonna be annoying. We're gonna come forth and summon Gazelle. Get Gazelle in, come forth. And you let me know if the point system's making sense to you. Effect Veiler. Well, did I need the Gazelle? I did not. Spinny has two points, and this is a special summon, because this is going to be a normal summon, a summon. So we're baiting so much extra effects. We don't even need it. We didn't need that. Did not need it. That's two summons on the field. Spinny would be the third for our 10,000 damage lethal. We debated so much back row activation. We got him. Buffer low, discard the spinny, draw two. I like to chain link block it with the spinny. Negate, again. We're baiting everything. I don't even need that. I do not need that. Now, what could Buffer low be drawn into? Come to me, discard, draw two. Trash, okay, not usable, but that's okay. Now we got three monsters, three summons, and it's over. To make the update jammer, it has to be level two or higher cyber. So you cannot make this with link monsters. You could make it with heat soul. If you're at 3000 life or lower, activate heat soul, then it summons update jammer, but we're not doing that. And then you make transcode talker. Burn me again. Uh, I, I think in the TCG tracking the 200 every summon, that's really annoying, isn't it? Transcode talker summoning the update jammer. Right now we are untargetable. Come forth and show con access code talker. This is with his toggle on. He wants to activate to pop my access code talker. A very good play on the resolution. You can't chain to it. You need your toggle on. Otherwise, it's not possible to respond to the access code talker. And just like that, Sunny is off the field, called by the grave, and we got double attack mate. Let's go. He knows it. Double attack lethal, playing through all the hand traps, continually making sure that I have my three summons and just bait the extra stuff, bait the extra. Every play I make, I ensured I had my three summons to make my lethal. All righty, so you now know the point system that I've revealed to you, the biggest secret that top players don't want you to know, is now what do you do with a four point hand? Three point hand is transcode into the access code talker with the update jammer. But with the access code talker on the field, after you clear out their field, you can get hit by an impermanence sometimes, and that's totally not cool. So if they're saving their impermanence for an access code talker, maybe you're under the max you challenge, they just draw into that impermanence. What could you do? So what I want to do is I want to summon Foxy, special Foxy, special Spinny, special Jack Jaguar, that's four points to do an extension of what we would normally do. So it's very important that we do not activate the effect of Foxy because then we can't summon the other effect. So we're going to now link this off into the Bale Links. Get Bale Linksing. The Foxy is also going to be discarding the Jack Jaguar. That's going to be very important. Let's grab the field spell here. And the Foxy cannot activate because we have no face-up spell and traps on the field. Even the opponent, if they have one, we can activate the Foxy. It even gets rid of Skill Drain. Very good. Now, we could Foxy discard the Jack. Jack to the graveyard, come forth and summon. Do not destroy your field spell. You're going to say, no, thank you. Now I'm going to put Bale Links over here. So I could summon the Jack Jaguar. All right. Jack Jaguar, come forth and summon. Very good. Target, return. And now we just need to summon the spinning, which is not going to be difficult to do. We're going to make a Splash Mage. Get Splashing. Splash Mage over here. And we're going to activate the Splash Mage, summoning the Jack Jaguar. Now, this is our last chance to get spinning because I'm going to be summoning non Salamangrates. So let's get spinning, spin up any of these. I don't really care. And then we're going to spin ourselves onto the field. Perfect. Now, we're going to update jam. This is a four point play. Normally, it's a three point play. And this is where you would just transcode lethal with update jammer. But what if you could make the play a little bit better? A little bit better, instead, you could have a transcode talker. Transcode talker, come forth. And the transcode talker has to summon to where it is pointing. I'm going to transcode talker, summon the splash mage back onto the fields. And now, when I summon the access code talker, it cannot be targeted. The transcode is going to protect it fully. So we're going to access code talker. If you wanted an extra pop, 
what you could do is you could have also summoned a Lingaribo during this to have an extra pop if you needed it. So we're gonna link two, link two, and now the Axe Kotaku is gonna be smaller than normal, but it's gonna be untargetable. Untargetable. Up to Jammer, always have the Axe Kotaku on the last chain link because it could not be responded to. And that's it, just like this can't veil. So if we're under the maxi challenge, he just draws an availer. He draws into impermanence, but he can't use it because, you know, he's got cards in the field. He's got double impermanence in the hand. Double. Well, now you have lethal through impermanence through the maxi challenge. If they maxi challenge always, I think that this is the correct play to check if I could summon four times because I don't want to lose to impermanence. Now they could imperm me, but they can't. Got him. That's double attack with the Axis Code Talker. You even have an attack with the Trans Code Talker. Let's say you need to clear another monster. Maybe he summoned something in the battle phase. Maybe he whipped out, you know, uh, who knows, a snow. He just had enough to do snow once. Got him. Lethal damage untargetable. Four point combo. Let's go. Now, before I show you my deck list, you could just type in Salem. Any card you want to look up that would be using a Salman Great deck, you should stats. We got the Salman Great deck right here. Is it doing well in tournaments? Oh, we got some tournament versions. So here you go. Here's the breakdown of how it's normally being played. Tournament and non-tournaments. You can copy this. And then this is what I decided to play. This is what I am enjoying. The structured deck is worth it. Definitely want to get structured decking and, you know, apply the point system combos that I was talking about to get your turn one heat soul with the wolf plus the counter trap, turn two lethal with the update jammer to access code talker or make it untargetable if you could summon four times. And I really dislike Flanderies. Triple Lancia, they can't banish their Flanderies. Triple draw and Lockbird, they can't search with Flanderies. Also, if you get max seed, they draw one, you draw and Lockbird, they're done drawing. So it's even more anti-Maxi, anti, anti fluanderies I think Droll and Lockbird's gonna really go up in usage.